This is the Lake District National Park. The Lake District is one of the most beautiful places in the whole of the UK. It's also home to some of the UK's favourite animals. I grew up in the Lake District and so the majority of my childhood was out exploring the fells and finding wildlife and to this day nothing's really changed too much. I'm now a zoologist and so I still spend all of my time going out finding wildlife. I've been wanting to make a film or films for quite some time and it was really the main storyline that kept evading me. I knew I wanted to make something but what do I make it about? That, that was you know, the question that I had. And it wasn't until I was reading this book, I, I use it quite regularly as a reference guide, and it's about footprints and clues that animals leave behind in an environment to help you find them. And that's when the idea hit me that I could take you with me and show you me finding wildlife. And I know it doesn't sound like the most exciting of film ideas, but it follows this career path that I want to follow. I want to invigorate people about conservation and impassion people about wildlife and, you know, wanting to save wildlife. And so here is you following me as I go out finding wildlife. The red squirrel, it's just one of those animals that hides in plain sight. I've been following them before, and when I've got to the tree that they were in, I've looked up and they'd vanished. You would think following a bright orange squirrel would be quite easy to do, but when you actually spend time doing it, you soon realise just how camouflaged that red fur is and how quickly they move from tree to tree. One of the first things that I do when looking for reds in a woodland is I try and work out where there is most activity to better my chances for actually seeing them. And this big tree stump here holds the clues of just that. So if you have a look a bit closer, you'll see some Scots pine cone that's been chewed on, hazelnut that's been cracked in half, even some of this beech mast has been popped open and the nuts been taken from it. So what this is, it's a red squirrel feeding site and it's probably the feeding site of a particular individual that they'll go foraging in the morning for the nuts, they'll bring them here and they'll just devour them in complete comfort knowing they've got this full panoramic 360 degree view of the woodland around them and they'll feel pretty secure doing that. So this tells me that squirrels are actually using this area and it also tells me that it is squirrels that I'm looking at simply because of how they've deshelled these nuts. Things like wood mice will actually access the nut in a completely different way to squirrels. So this is a great indicator of that. But I just want to make sure that this is fresh and not from a couple of months, even a couple of years ago. And so I'm going to look for more clues that tell me just that. I think what's actually surprised me the most this morning is not that I haven't seen any red squirrels yet. It's just the fact that the sun's come out. Oh, here. This tree here. This might hold another one of those clues I was talking about. What I'm looking for is a red squirrel dray. And a red squirrel's dray is basically its nest. You're looking for something that's about yay big, about you know the size of a football. It's made of moss, sticks, and leaves. The fact that it has leaves in it is quite significant because birds won't use leaves in their nests, but red squirrels will. And you have to look about two thirds up the tree. This is a, a big tree, so I actually can't see that far up it, but you'll read that it's two thirds up and then you'll go out looking for it and you'll see them lower and higher and it's not an exact science because squirrels don't really care about definitions 
and there's a couple of other things that you can you know really look for that will definitively tell you whether it is a dray or not but I think first I should try and find one and I can really highlight them then there's something so wonderful about standing at the base of some of these trees and you just think they've been here for I don't know this has been here for well over you know 200 years they're just so phenomenal these trees this is a great time of year to be looking for drays since the trees have no leaves on them they stick out like a sore thumb after I stopped admiring the trees I made my way up the slope finding a dray near this feeding site will tell me the squirrels are currently using this home range as I reach the top of the hill something in the tree above caught my eye. As far as drays go, this thing is an absolute monster and one of those distinctive features that I was talking about, if you have a look a bit closer, you'll see how it's absolutely smack up against the tree trunk. That is something that is very, very typical of a dray. If you see something, if you see a ball of moss that's on a limb and it's well away from the tree trunk, you're probably looking at a bird's nest. And one other thing that's not very typical in this dray, but is quite typical of most drays, is that they tend to be in, in the Vs of limbs or in the nooks of trees. And you see it underneath here, it hasn't really got any support. They usually put them on a branch for support. One of my absolute favorite facts about drays is that they are completely waterproof. And I know that seems pretty obvious, but you, you, when you think about it, you can get two or three squirrels inside of a drain. You just think about them weathering out a storm together, all cuddled up, all snug. I'd love to find out what goes on inside of a big dray like that. But I think it's time for me to shut up for a bit. I'm gonna sit outside. What I'm kind of expecting is it's not far away from where that feeding site was. So if something's been feeding down there earlier on this morning, what's probably happened is it's come up here and it's taken a nap. So if I sit and wait, what I hopefully might get is the squirrel coming out under the dray for an afternoon snack. If wildlife photography has taught me anything, it's patience. But minutes soon turn to hours and my patience ran out. So instead of sitting by the dray, I decided to walk through the woodland. After about 15 minutes, I came across my first flash of red fur. This little man spent some time grooming himself. When he finally got going, making his way down the tree, he kept stopping and rubbing his cheeks on different branches. This was him scent marking it. I had a feeling he was up to something, so I followed him closely, and sure enough, he started chasing this female round and round a tree. February is a peak point in the mating season of red squirrels, and he is doing his best to entice her, although she wasn't too impressed. The biggest issue that red squirrels have is the squirrel pox virus that's spread from grey squirrels. That is, that is the, you know, the thing that is decimating our red squirrels. If grey squirrels move in, they carry the squirrel pox virus and the squirrel pox virus kills red squirrels. If a red squirrel gets it, they're dead. But it's not just the fact that they're gonna die, they get these horrible ulcers that take over their nose, their eyes, their mouths, they can't eat, and they finally succumb to starvation. So within two weeks of getting it, they're gonna be dead. And it's just, you know, that in itself is just absolutely horrendous. Now, this is a real, real issue because we don't have many red squirrels left, especially here in England. There's only something like 15,000, and that's, that's realistically not that much. And it's not as if it's 15,000 and they're slowly growing. It's 15,000 and these small charities and people that work to protect red squirrels are just constantly trying to push back grey squirrels. And I totally get I was going to keep rambling and talk about pine marting, but I got distracted. Really... Oh, look, red squirrel. And I think it's just a brilliant place to end the film. It's just running on that wall. Can you see it? They can be tricky to find, but when you finally see them, you'll be overjoyed with just how beautiful this animal is. And for now, they are in the Lake District, but they need our help.